Hi everyone, Nicholas Devine, Assistant Professional out here at Lake Caranut Country Club and back today with one of the biggest head-to-heads I've ever done. And today I have for you the five new low spin models that have hit the market in late 2017 and early 2018. So in this video we're going to be looking at the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero, we're going to be looking at the TaylorMade M3, we're going to be looking at the Cobra F8 Plus, the Ping G400 LS and the Mizuno ST180. So hang out for this video, we're going to run through these five drivers, we're going to have a look at the, their look, we're going to look at the sound, we're going to look at the price of these three, five drivers, we're going to have a look at uh, the spin numbers, the max height and of course the overall distance and we're going to see who comes out the winner and which driver is best for your buck in 2018. So hang out for this video, let's take a closer look. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run a video of uh, five shots or five of the best shots that I hit with each of these five drivers and then I'm going to bring up all the averages and all the information about these drivers and we're going to talk about them and then I'm going to, like I said, by the end of the video, I'm going to tell you which driver is best for your buck and which driver is the overall winner. So sit down, grab a cup of tea. Like I said, I'm only going to hit fives and I'll get, it through, get through them real quick and get to all the information that's most important. So, enjoy. One thing I'll run you through first of all, most of the drivers were at set at about nine and a half degrees or close to nine and a half degrees as I could possibly get. As you can understand, ping doesn't actually get to nine and a half. Uh, it gets slightly above or slightly below, I'm not exactly sure, 100%. But all the drivers were hit with a hazardous shaft except the Mizuno. Unfortunately, the hazardous shaft isn't available uh, in the Mizuno fitting system, so I was hitting it with a 10 side white shaft, which is slightly a little bit heavier but also a low spinning driver shaft. And as you understand, the hazardous yellow is a low spin uh, driver shaft as well, and that was hit in the 6.0. Now, let's talk about look, and you'll see the images coming up on the screen. Now, big winner for me is the Callaway Rogue. For me, I love the carbon fiber uh, back of the Callaway Rogue, and I love the color systems of the Rogue. I wasn't a big fan of the Epic, but the Callaway Rogue now, for me, I think they've nailed it, and I love the look of this driver. Coming in second for me is the Taylor Made. Um, I'm not a big fan of the silver front. The white front for me was a lot better, but the silver front, and as you can see from the images coming up, it's something that you have to get used to as an individual. And I have heard mixed feedback with regards to this driver. Some people like the silver, some people don't. Some people prefer the old white. Totally up to you. Like I said, this is just my opinion. Then for me it comes the ping. Um, it is a very, very busy head, but if you can get your head around the busy head, for me, you know what, it does look pretty good. Mizuno came in fourth. Um, it only beat the Cobra simply because the Cobra comes in that grey head. If they had brought that Cobra in the black head into Australia, I honestly think the Cobra probably would have finished first or second. But because it's that grey head, I am not a big fan. That's my personal opinion, and Cobra came in last. Mizuno, you just got to get your head around the, how blue that head is, but you will do that once you start to see the numbers that come out of this driver. All right, let's move on to price. Now, these are very, very close to recommended retail prices. Uh, they're not exactly recommend re recommended retail, but very, very close. 
Cheapest driver is a Mizuno ST180 and the Cobra F8 Plus, both coming in at $599, followed by the Ping at $629, and then you've got the TaylorMade uh, M3 and the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero coming in at $699. So, Mizuno and Cobra are the cheapest, of course, and then Ping third, and then uh, TaylorMade and Callaway coming in at last and being the most expensive of the three brands. Now, sound-wise, now I'm going to run a video quickly now of me hitting all five drivers again, just so you can hear the sound. Now, really, to be honest, they all sound pretty good. Um, when I move into the next video tomorrow, which is more about the, I guess, the more standard heads, there is one driver that's significantly, significantly louder than the rest. But in the low spin models, they all sounded pretty amazing. So I can't separate them. So to me personally, they all sound really good. Now we're getting into the critical parts, max height. Now I'm going to bring up the numbers on the screen. Now, Cobra was the highest. Actually, let's go back a step. I'm going to go back to spin. Now, spin, for me, optimal spin numbers are anywhere between 2100 and 2500 for my clubhead speed. Now, Cobra came in last. That came in at 3368. And once I get into max height, you'll see how that matches up. I was actually a little bit shocked by the max height simply because of the fact that the milled face that Cobra put in and the variable face thickness was supposed to lessen the spin of that driver. But it didn't actually do that. It actually spun quite a lot. We then move into fourth place, which was the Mizuno, no, the Ping actually, the Ping LS 2547. The Mizuno came in at 2511. The Taylor made at 2424, with the winner being Callaway at 2405. And when you actually look at overall distance and when we start to talk about max height, you'll see how those numbers match up. So, moving on to max height, and you see the image coming up the screen now. Cobra was the highest and that matches up with their spin numbers and their total ceiling height or average ceiling height was 23 meters. Uh, the Ping and Callaway came in at 22, the Mizuno at 21 and the TaylorMade at 20. Now really in hindsight we are not talking about too much in height difference there but if it's starting to blow a, a lot 20 to 24 you can see the difference that the wind could have on that golf ball. So really the winner there is TaylorMade, um, Mizuno in second, Callaway and Ping in third. Now, shot dispersion. Now this is the one that shocked me the most because normally when we talk about shot dispersion, Ping normally wins hands down. Now if you see the images coming up on the screen, Taylor made with its twist face. Now they're saying that if it comes out of the hill, comes out of the toe, it always works back to the middle of the fairway. Now when I did the testing of this driver in this in this video, it did do that. But there was that occasional time when I was hitting it other times where if I missed it slightly more to the toe or slightly more to the hill, it really went right and it really went left. So for the purpose of this video, Taylor made did win, but do be aware of that driver you really do need to go and test this driver because it is going to be an acquired taste some people are going to like this driver some people are going to hate this driver but for the purpose of this test Taylor made with their twist face and their shot dispersion did win coming in second uh, was the Callaway followed by the Cobra funny enough then the Ping which really shocked me because I was expecting Ping to come number one then the Mizuno but if you look at the overall ring system of all these drivers, there isn't that much difference. But you can really do can really tell that TaylorMade did win. It did have a very, very tight shot dispersion. So well done to TaylorMade with that twist face technology. It seems to have worked in this test. Now, the big one, total distance, and you'll see the numbers coming up on the screen right now. Now, if you look at all the club head speeds in comparison to total distance I couldn't really get my driver speed exactly the same on the average for all of the drivers 
So what I've done now is I've looked at the quickest driver, which is the Cobra 98, and I've brought up all the other drivers to 98 swing speed. Now they say for every mile per hour of swing speed equates to roughly three meters in extra distance. So when we get to that, the big winner there is of course the Callaway Rogue. Now the Callaway Rogue came in at 239 meters, followed second by the Mizuno. So really, then the TaylorMade, then the Ping, and then the Cobra. So everyone always wants to pick a driver that goes the furthest, and you know what? Callaway won hands down. You can see there when I actually did the normal testing, you see the figures there. I only swung it at 94 or 95 miles per hour. I think it's 94, and it was already going further than the rest. It's only when I adjusted the averages that you could see that Mizuno caught up. So big well done there to Mizuno. An unbelievable driver and if you saw my video of that driver you'll understand why now just before I finish this video off if you do want to see um, reviews on each of these drivers I have left a link down below for you to go and watch the individual reviews now just remember I also hurt my arm a week and a half before doing this video so I'm not swinging at the speeds I normally swing it at I'm normally around 101 to 105 now final thoughts overall winner definitely the Callaway Rogue. It had great spin numbers, great penetrating flight, had a good shot dispersion, and is worth the investment at $699. So definitely go and try that driver because I think you will be absolutely amazed. If you thought the Epic was good, the Rogue is even better, and the Rogue is even better for people who don't have the swing speeds that they, you, you need or what I think you require to hit an Epic. But Bang for your buck. Definitely the Mizuno ST180. Finally, Mizuno has a driver that complement their irons. Their irons, for me, have always been number one worldwide when it comes to feel off the face, and they have made amazing irons for years. But they never got it right with a driver. I finally feel Mizuno has got a driver that can complement their irons. So bang for your buck definitely go and try the Mizuno ST180 and when you see my video or review of just that driver alone you will be impressed by that driver anyway there you have it there's my thoughts on the 2017 or late 2017 and early 2018 low spin drivers get out there try them all you might find it different but most of all leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you thought of all those five drivers if you've hit them but most of all hit the subscribe button it's easy to do, it just gives you a notification of when my next video is. I need you to help me get to a thousand subscribers so I can keep doing these videos. But most of all, we'll see you next time on ND Golf.